our first NASCAR show here on the Edge DFS, joined by a couple dudes who know what they're talking about, hosted by a guy who doesn't know what they're talking about. Listen to what they say. Don't listen to what what I say. Let's get into it. Well, what is up, guys? Welcome to the Edge DFS. My name is Tyson Smith. Joined by Sterling Thess and Ryan Mail from Dynasty DNA. What is up, guys? How you doing, man? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us, Sterling. That Xfinity race just finished, man. Did you did you pull another one out of your hat? Yeah, sitting in fourth place right now. So got a nice little five K day. Not bad. Not bad, dude. Uh, make sure you guys are in the Dynasty DNA Discord. Uh, that's that's a huge piece of this because we're recording this on Saturday night around 8 p.m. For whatever reason, the odds aren't out, um, which trickles down to no projections from you know SaberSim and Roto Grinders and all these guys. So uh, make sure you're in in their Discord. I'll put that link down below. Uh, Sterling does an incredible write up. Um, you know. Last week, he broke down like a ton of the drivers, talked about his strategy as far as which groups to set up, guys that he's fading, guys that he likes. So that's going to be a companion piece to this video. <clears throat> so make sure you're in there. And obviously, if you're in the Edge DFS Discord already, you know, there's guys in there. We can You can jump back and forth. All right. So guys, we're talking, we're talking Phoenix here. So for a noob like me, let's just talk basic um dfs strategy for nascar right so um any 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 one of you guys want to jump in um if somebody is new and if you're a veteran this this will only be like a you know 30 second segment here but if somebody's new what are your thoughts on general strategy how you're treating this and specifically for this track in phoenix well this race is uh 312 laps so you get, you get a quarter of a point for laps led, and you get 0.45 points for fastest laps. But those fastest laps don't count when they're under caution. So I have it written down here that we'll have probably at least 27 caution laps. So if you take those out, you're going to have 78 points possible for laps led. Then you'll have 128 and a quarter points for fastest laps. It's going to be a total of 206 and a quarter dominator points. And we're looking for two to three dominators. So, yeah, I mean, you're definitely looking for guys that you think can lead because most, I mean, what would you say? Probably 60, 70% of the time, the fastest laps come from the leader also. So yeah, especially at a track like this, especially at a track like this. So you want guys that you think can, can go out and lead laps. So you're going to want, you know, guys that start out front. And then another thing to touch on, which is kind of, it's kind of crappy at this race because there isn't a lot of passing due to the short track package, but there is the point differential that comes into play too. Yeah. It's like if you have a guy, just for instance, that starts 30th, that makes her way up to 10th and finishes 10th, you get, what is it, like one point per position? It is. Yeah, so you get that extra 20 points. Now on the flip side, if you play a lot of Denny Hamlin, who's starting first, um, and something would happen and he gets in a wreck and he finishes 30th, you, you lose 30 points. So it's a double edged yeah. sword there. Yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. And, and yeah, when I, go ahead, when dude. I first started, and I just kind of, that's all I played for was point their place differential. Then once I started doing their actual dominators, that's when shit started changing. So yeah. Any yeah. tips for those of us who want to refresh our app? every uh, five seconds while uh, enjoying NASCAR, uh, you know, <laughs> probably don't do that, right? Or at least check in every once in a while, check in when there's a yellow or check in, you know, I, 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 any tips for us? Anytime something big happens is when I, you know, when I do it, every caution, anytime somebody's out of the race, I'll look to see how much percentage that particular guy was yeah. owned, you know? And end of the stage and you definitely do not want to look when they're pitting especially green flag pits <laughs> you get a real yeah. real excited uh when you shouldn't be at all <laughs> yeah. that's exactly it so that's exactly it. 
All right, so some basic strategy, and obviously we're gonna we're gonna continue to do you know talk about this as we go through it, and we're gonna by the end we're gonna build a lineup together. Um, like I said, we don't have ownership or anything out right now, but just using kind of the info we have, we're gonna try to get through as much as we can here. So, what about what about this particular track? Like, what kind of race can this be? Um, you know, last week what well, we were in Vegas, right? So like. You know, just if if you picked up and started watching last week, like what are some of the differences in some of these tracks and, and what can we expect in this one? Like we just saw the Xfinity race go down and yeah, there was some wrecks that happened, but typically are we building for wrecks? Are we building for a lot of passing? Like what, what are your thoughts on that? And, and just what, what are the characteristics behind this track? Uh, Phoenix is it's with this pack, it's just, going to be pretty much impossible to pass so we're going to be looking for at least two guys starting inside the top 10 probably more like three and i could even see you playing four but basically it's you're going to want guys that get that track position you're going to want guys that can get the lead or pass cars on pit road like really pit road is where there's going to be they're only passing for the most part should be a boring race but boring races are good for dfs yeah, I mean, this, um, Vegas was kind of like a mile and a half. You could pass a little easier for some odd reason. I'm no engineer or whatever, but for some odd reason with this new car, it's uh, the short tracks are just not good for passing. I mean, it's they call it dirty air and everything like that. Like, they just can't. They, they When they get to the back of somebody, they just can't pull out and pull past them. So this is... Like Sterling said, this is kind of a race where probably won't be many pass much passing, and it might be kind of boring. So that's where yeah, it kind of kind of stinks because NASCAR has been on a roll lately with some good races, and yeah, this might be the stinker. Yeah, but to back that up, we've had four races at Phoenix in this next gen car with a similar package. It's been a little bit different, but for the most part, it's been the same package, which is really shitty to pass in. But the pool sitter has been optimal in all four of those races. So we're going to be looking at a lot of Denny Hamlin. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So what were your thoughts on the practicing, you know, qualifying? We're obviously going to jump into the breakdown and really talk about where everybody landed. But what jumped out to you just by watching that? Because I know you guys watch all that stuff. Anything jump out? I mean, Hamlin starting at one. Is there any pit areas that we want to talk about as far as positioning there? What jumped out to you about practice? Uh, the Toyotas are fast. Um, definitely going to want to play some Toyotas. Uh, for, for some odd reason, they just unloaded fast. The Chevys just didn't. Um, you know, so you got your Denny Hamlins, your Christopher Bells, uh, True or not True X, uh, Reddick, I think, unloaded fast. Yeah. So that that was one thing that jumped out to me is uh, just a, a lot of guys missed on it too. I mean, there's like uh, Kyle Bush that. Normally runs pretty decent here. He hasn't looked good at all this weekend. Yeah, he looked terrible in practice. Yeah. So, and then the Fords, I mean, even like Joey Logano, I think is like 20th, starting 20th. And Yeah, but he, he showed a lot of speed in practice. He had the best single lap and then he was in the top five for the five, 10, 15 and 25 or 20 lap averages. So yeah, he just didn't qualify got, good, which could actually be a good thing because We've seen him start on the pool, be trimmed out. So they're really aiming for that qualifying run. Maybe this week they switch things up, prepared more for end race package instead of just getting the pool. Could be. Could All be. Right. So let's, uh, anything else you guys want to touch on before we start digging deep and get into this breakdown? We can hit on that or pit road thing about Denny Hamlin. Yeah. He's got that number one stall. So here, let me actually pull that up. I think you sent me a graphic. For that, let yeah. me pull that up. Let's see. Well, there's your screenshot there. Let's. I, I'm assuming this 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 holds. Let's hope so. 5K, yeah. not a bad day. Was it 1500 to max that? Did you yeah. max that? I did. You had a 10K earlier. What was that? Three weeks? Two weeks ago? That was. Yeah, I think that was Daytona. You you were up. You were at. You were at. When it when it closed, you were twenty five k up there. And then uh, you got stack corrected out of it. That that, that was yeah. that's that's got to be brutal, man. I've I've kind of been there before for for football. 
Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> All right, here's here here's the uh, here's the graphic we were talking about here. You wanted to point anything out here? Uh, basically, the main thing is Denny Hamlin. He's got that number one pit box, so basically, he's going to be able to pull into his stall, and as soon as they drop the jack, he can just hammer down, sling on out of there. He's not going to have to worry about pit road speed from that point on. So he can just, once they drop him down, he can go. Then you got Ty Gibbs here, this 54. He's in that six pit stall there. He's going to have Kyle Larson in front of him, which Kyle Larson starts way behind him. So he should be able to swing in there, have an open box in front of him. Then he's got that five box there that's wide open. So he's going to be able to get off pit road very quickly. Then same thing goes for Tyler Reddick, Michael McDowell here in the 34. Chase Elliott, too. That could actually be a really good pivot off these front guys like Ty Gibbs and Denny Hamlin. He could steal the road, steal the lead off pit road here at some point. And then Christopher Bell. Like Basically, when I'm looking at pit road, I'm looking for who can get in with someone that's not... A guy that's going to be behind them when they come on pit road. So they got that front box open, then the box behind them. Hopefully that is open, which you got Christopher Bell. Chase Elliott, Michael McDowell, Tyler Reddick, Ty Gibbs, and Denny Hamlin that all have great pit stalls for this week. Are there any yeah, and- spots that – sorry to cut you off the Ryan. Are there are there any spots that are negative? Like is is are you looking at and going, oh, I don't really like where he's at, and, and maybe a, a, a downgrade? There's not really anyone that's – jumping out at me just yet but uh i would definitely dive more into that and have that in the write-up if i see anything nice go ahead ryan what were you gonna say yeah they they um i i heard this week that that number one pit stall at phoenix is like the prime pit stall in like all of nascar like it's so like just because of the scoring loops and the the speed loops and everything like that um, like Sterling said, he can, he doesn't have to worry about speeding going into a stall. So that kind of gives him an advantage. Um, so that is like, I, I don't remember the stat or whatever, but they said that, yeah, it, it's like a 30 or 40% win rate from that pit stall box. So this is, that's something to keep in mind. It seems like Denny's going to be like what? 50, 60% owned. You think I, I would say, yeah, I would say for sure. So, uh, any thoughts on, I mean, uh, let's talk briefly about, you know, your exposures here, um, as far as your general strategy, I know it changes, you know, for different tracks and and different things like that, but, uh, you know, people probably don't love just locking dudes in, but sometimes it's probably beneficial to take a big stab on a dude like that. You you know, if he's 50, 60% owned, do you make the, you know, do you, come out and say, I'm either fading him or I'm locking him? Is that how you roll sometimes? What are your guys' strategy for a dude that's obviously probably going to be the, the top-owned guy and he's the best play? Yeah, I mean, I I probably am going to lock him in. I only make like 10 or 11 lineups. I'm not as into his Sterling, so I'll let him mostly talk about this, but I'll probably have him in probably 90 or 80%, I would say. It's, I plan on Max in that 15 and... As we sit here and talk, because of that Xfinity day, I'm planning on locking Denny Hamlin and they're all 150. So, I love it, dude. I mean, you you got to take some stands, right? I mean, if you spread yourself out too much, you're really yeah, right. You're just you're just going to end up kind of maybe breaking even, or if shit hits the fan, you might still not even break even. And at that point, you really don't have much of an advantage. That's just basically, uh, you know, the few weeks that I've been watching you guys play and seeing your strategy. It seems like you got to just suck it up and find a couple guys that you're really high on, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly it. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I do like Hamlin. Like last week, it was Larson, and Larson I had in just about every lineup but one. I was like, I'll, I'll pivot off him in one lineup just in case something would happen. Because he was, I think, 70, 70-ish percent owned. but In their small fields, yeah, he was. In the big one, he was like 58 or something. I was a little bit over on him, but not as over as I wanted to be. But last yeah. week we had, last week was just fucking weird. Yeah. 
And you know, if Hamlin hits the wall, just close the laptop and start watching Netflix and drinking. You know, I, you know, yeah. I mean, right? Like, <laughs> that's exactly it. All right, let's get into this breakdown. We're gonna run down all these positions, and uh, I'll let these guys cook. Let's do it. Break it down. All right, so I'm gonna pull up. Like I said, unfortunately, we don't have Saber Sim. Um, there are projections right now. RG doesn't have any. I mean, there's nothing. So um, we're wait. We're waiting on that. So definitely, like I said, jump in that Discord, um, and that'll allow you to access these guys and be able to ask questions, all that fun stuff. Um, very receptive. And your guys' Discord is popping lately, right? You're getting some. You're getting some dudes in there who know what the hell they're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sterling's done a great job of recruiting people. So <clears throat> awesome. It, yeah, we uh we have a quite quite a few guys in there that have taken down some big contests. Like I was telling these guys here last week when all these guys hopped in, there's probably over like close to seven figures one between the guys that are in this Discord throughout the last couple of seasons. So they know what they're doing and they're very helpful. They will help yeah. anybody. So. Yeah, that's that's one thing about this community. It's like anybody will help you. Like, you know, I, I would think like guys like sterling that are like sharks they'd be like oh i don't want to give you my lineup like you know i don't want you to win i want to win but yeah everybody will help you out you know i feel like with the information you're releasing there's there's enough for everybody to win <laughs> you know like yeah, that, that is true. Yeah. yeah you know yeah. um and, and you got to take your own stance he's not going to give you a lineup i mean w w you know that's just not how it works um, all right, right, so so let's talk. Let's talk here. We got this. Um, like I said, unfortunately, no saber sim, but we got this from King Sheets DFS on Twitter. Uh, make sure you guys are following them. Every time I've seen this before, I use this all the time. So make sure you're following him. Uh, Hamlin first. Ty Gibbs. Looks like we got two Joe Gibbs at the top here the with these Toyotas. So what jumps out to you here, team wise? What jumps out to you here? Um, as far as taking stands, any rules, I'll just let you guys cook. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's like I said, the Toyota is just unloaded fast. I mean, it's, you're going to want to play Denny Hamlin probably. And what I like about this, this sheet here is, uh, it up at the top there, it says DK five X and DK six X. So it, it kind of shows you where that person has to finish. And then, uh, down in them categories, it says like finish and then Dom and, Dom, which stands for dominator, and then it shows like how many dominator points they would have to get to be get to get to be optimal. So you can kind of study that a little bit. So Denny Hamlin, they get six times, would have to finish first and get 18 dominator points, which is definitely definitely more than doable. Yeah, he'll he'll have those 18 dom points by the end of stage one. So. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, unless like you said, I mean, unless that Justin All Guy or thing from earlier happens on lap four. You know, we're we're gonna probably be all in on Denny Hamlin. Yeah, that's I'm definitely I'm gonna be all in. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, can't win them all. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, I mean, like like I said, it's just the Toyota. I mean, you have Eric Jones. It was priced at seven thousand starting fourth, and all he has to do is run right around where he started. And he's yeah. optimal, and he he showed a ton of speed in practice, actually. He had, I want to say he had the best overall lap. Where's he at here? Man, how was his long speed? That's what always kind of... Yeah, but here, you can get away with having a shitty long run car. Yeah, that's true. All right. He was sixth overall in single lap. He had the best five lap. He had the fifth, tenth lap, and sixth, fifteen lap. So he should be able to hang on to that top five all day. I think the only way he falls out of the top 10 is if he loses out on pit road. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's what I like this sheet. I mean, it's just, you can sit there and study it. And, and, uh, I know that King sheets puts this out every week and I send it to Sterling and we sit there and look at it and kind of, kind of makes it to where you don't have to do the math yourself. I mean, you know, we sit there with calculators and try to calculate this stuff out, and that's kind of nice, you so, know. And then obviously, obviously, if these uh, guys that have to finish 18th or something get a couple dominator points, and they don't have to finish 18th, you know, yeah. or, or whatever. So, so are you is, you, you know, targeting 5x or 6x? Like, what is your when you're looking at these guys and you're looking at what you need from them? What are you targeting? The goal is 
5x, but you can get away with some of these cheaper guys hitting four and a half. So, but mainly looking for 5x or better. Got it. Got it. What about some of these teams? Like, are you stacking team? Like, how does that work for you guys? And and what kind of rules are you going to be setting? Is it a top five sort of thing? Is it like, you know, is it a top 10? I know you mentioned what you're, you're trying to get a couple guys in that group. So, so this isn't like a super speedway race. So like, I know Sterling's like might stack a little bit of like make a Toyota build, but it isn't like a, a teammate's really going to help you in this race. So like, I mean, I mean, I know me personally, like I don't really look at that. Um, I, I can let Sterling, you know, elaborate more, but if this was like a, you know, like Atlanta and Daytona, we saw earlier in the year, like you, you had to have teammates help you get to the front where this race, it's, kind of like an every man for himself. Like there's no Talladega night slingshot, you know, <laughs> engage kind of move, you know? So, um, but I mean, definitely team wise or like manufacturer wise. I mean, I might make a few lineups like Sterling said, yeah. like just based on Toyotas or Chevys, but team wise, like Joe Gibbs racing, like them guys in the front row, like they're going to race for themselves as soon as the green flag, you know, drops. So, but with the front row being Joe Gibbs, we could see some teamwork to start the race off just to help get Ty Gibbs down down on the bottom there. But for the most part, you're not really going to be looking at teamwork here. It's going to be whoever's fast is going to be fast. And if their teammates struggling, well, better luck next week. But as far as stacking, it uh I'm going to be stacking their Toyotas just because of how fast they unloaded. And strictly, I'm going to look for Joe Gibbs, which is Hamlin and obviously Gibbs there. And then my next favorite, I'm going to get all the way down to uh, Christopher Bell, who's also on that Joe Gibbs team. If I'm, if I'm fading a Joe Gibbs card, it's going to be Martin Truex. But outside of Joe Gibbs, I like Tyler Reddick, 23XI. And then we just talked about Eric Jones. So it's pretty much Toyota, Toyota, and a little bit more Toyota. It's one of those I didn't realize. Like, I saw it before I came here. Uh, Truex is kind of on a winless streak for a while. Yeah. He's one of the top drivers that's on a winless streak. Yeah, he probably should consider retiring. Yeah, so that's that's something to keep in mind. Like, he's kind of... Kind of hasn't been himself. But... It is worth noting that Toyota has not won here since 2021, so they have not won in the next-gen car at Phoenix. But as fast as they unloaded, the way this package is, I I don't see how Dan, Danny Han, Denny Hamlin does not win. Yeah, it's it's one of those. Uh, they got a new body this year. I mean, that's that's one thing to note. That's um, that's one thing that changed from now to 2021 when the last time they cha- that when they won. Is this year Ford and Toyota got new bodies, so that kind of affects the the downforce and the airflow. So that's that's one thing the you know the bright spot of you know maybe this is Toyota's chance here because most of the time when when manufacturers get granted a new body, they're not going to get a new body that hurts them. Obviously, they're going to do a lot of testing and make sure that you know they bring out a new body that helps. So and the uh, Toyota team came out and publicly said that they were very excited and happy with what they ended up with and i've never heard them actually say something like that so for them to come out and say that they must be really happy with what they have and we've seen that in practice so so what about uh, i mean we oh go ahead no i I was just gonna point out if you had something else to throw in there no worries but i was gonna point out what are what about some mispricing here you know like just right off the right off the page like Guys that you think are mispriced, um, anything jump out to you just right off the bat? Ty Gibbs, for sure. I I thought he was mispriced before we even seen qualifying or practice, and then he came out. He looked decent in practice. He wasn't as fast as the rest of their Toyotas, but I did end up getting a unit down on him at plus 3,500 before qualifying, so I I've been big on him since last week. Yeah, I mean, he did run good last week, too. And, I mean, that's the first race where we see not the non-super speedway type racing. And, and he looked good. So, uh, I'm all aboard that train, too. And 
Uh, Austin Cindric unloaded fast. I don't really know what happened in qualifying. I mean, I watched it, but I don't know if he missed a corner or what, but he, he was 6,200. That's dirt cheap. Yeah, and Penske, they've they've been really fast here, so he should actually be able to put something together and go forward, but starting back there at 34th, we got a pretty long first stage. I'm kind of worried that he goes a lap down and gets trapped a lap down. That that could happen because this is what is what is Phoenix a mile? Yeah. Yeah. So Bubba Wallace I thought was too cheap, but he he just doesn't look doesn't look like he was fast as fuck in practice though. He had awesome long run speed and at 7700 it's not going to take anything for him to pay off that price and let's look at his pit stall here. Because I know on our podcast, we were sitting there and we were, uh, yeah, we were saying about how cheap these guys were this week. But it just seemed like how they qualified kind of worked itself out. In, in my opinion, a lot of these guys did. Yeah. So Bubba Wallace, he's going to have their stall in front of him be opened. Then he's got Chase Briscoe on his way out. So Chase Briscoe is probably going to be sitting there. But for the most part, he should be able to get in real clean, get out real clean. So I'm I'm loving a little bit of Bubba Wallace this week. His practice, he was yeah, he was ninth overall in single lap, and then every other lap average he was top five. So he's got the long run speed, and I'm I'm gonna have a lot of Toyota in general. So these guys yeah. are, these guys in the top ten or top five, like when, when we're talking about groups, you had mentioned it earlier. Are you going to embrace a couple of these dudes and then try to mix in some value and some some you know some PD guys? Uh, I'm not going to get too extreme with the PD guys. I'm definitely going to have some of these guys. Like, I mean, Christopher Bell is starting 13th. I'll consider him a PD play. And then I think Kyle Larson is going to be an interesting play just because. He's so expensive. I don't think he's going to be very high owned. I'm not saying I'm going to play him yet, but I think he will be an easy way to get different. But you have John Hunter Nemechek starting 19th. That, he kind of, he had good short run speed, but his uh, 15 lap average was ranked mid-pack, so that's kind of iffy. But going down through here, there's... You got Bubba Wallace, Jerry Logano, maybe Alex Bowman, but there's not really any like clear cut PD play outside of Kyle Bush. And I just, I think it's going to take a lot for him to be on the winning lineup. You mentioned Cindric, Cindric earlier. What is he, 34th, 6,200? Yeah. Any interest in him? Y- yeah. A little bit. For me, it's, that's going to depend on what ownership comes in at. Yeah, because what was he in practice? He was third and five lap speed, 10th and 10 lap speed, and then he kind of dropped off a little bit. But yeah, I mean, that was, he he seemed like he unloaded fast and then just didn't have a good qualifying run, which that's that's something, if you remember last week, we kind of, Noah Gregson did the same thing. Yeah. Although Noah Gregson didn't didn't make a 10 or 15 lap run, and uh, he, he made a great ten, five lap run, and he was, Priced down at that that area, and then he qualified thirty something, and he ended up finishing fifth. So, yeah, he uh, he definitely put on a show last week. All right, so gun gun to your head here. What are what are uh, you know just off the top of your head? I know we got to deal with ownership, and you know you guys need to wait for that write up that that's going to go in the Dynasty DNA Discord. What are you doing here with your with your groups just off the top of your head? I'll have a top 10 group. I'll set that at two to three, possibly two to four, but most of those are going to be two to three. And then I'll go all the way down to these cheap guys that are starting in the back. I'll have like Haley, Cendric. My main thing is going to be Haley, Cendric, LaJoy, Barry, Austin, Dillon. Group those guys together. Set that at zero to one because I expect... I. I can see these guys carrying a lot of the ownership. So, then, who, yeah. So, 
who, who are some guys that you are just not interested at all? Like if we're trying to pare down our, our player pool here and really dial it in, how wide is your player pool typically? And are you Xing guys out in a race like this? I I normally try to get down to like at least 20 guys. So I cut out pretty much half the field. But looking down through it, it's going to be kind of rough to do. I I know a little bit ago I said Kyle Larson could be an interesting low own play. But I think he's definitely going to be one of the guys I end up Xing out. Oh, you think? I do. Just okay. That's mainly price. Yeah, I can see that. So is that your bull take? Is that your bull take right now? Maybe a little, 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 little under or fade on Larson as of right now until you see ownership. Yeah, I'm. I'll be under on Larson and Kyle Busch, and then Barry Lajori, Sandra Haley. I plan on being under on pretty much all of these PD guys. Yeah, uh, if this was last week at Vegas. I mean, we, we would probably be having a different conversation. But like I said, this short track package, and it's going to be like this next week at Bristol too. It's just, it's so yeah. hard to pass. So it's um, for these guys to work their way up. It, it It's going to take a lot. So it's just, it's hard to see it happening. I mean, if there was one guy to do it, I feel like it would be Kyle Larson, but that's, that's not a, that's not a bad strategy by Sterling. Fade him. What do you think? About- I mean, he, it- go ahead, dude. No, you're good. Oh, I was, I was, I was going to say it's it, like Sterling said, it's all going to depend on ownership. If he is going to be high, like higher owned, I'm definitely going to, I think be out on him. But if he's lower owned, I might take that. I'm going to probably take the different stance of everybody else. If you look back through the last four optimal lineups here, we haven't had a guy priced above seven K start further back than 24th. Most of these, most of these PD plays that are coming from twenty fifth on back or six K or less. Okay, so Kyle, well, that's good Kyle Bush at ninety two hundred is is a little risky there. He's got to. What, what do you think he's got to get to to pay that off? Uh, I would say he needs. Let me see here. What's what's that chart say? Kyle Bush has to get to. Ninth or fourteenth, depending on where you're shooting for the five or the six. But the five is fourteen, and the six is ninth. That's I think that's going to be tough. Yeah, he strictly PD. He's got to get fourteenth, and I I don't see it. I mean, at some point, I think he can get there, but I don't think that's going to be enough by itself. I think he's going to need dome points, a lap sled, fast laps, and I just don't see it happening. Yeah, because I mean, I. I feel like they're going to work on their car at some point, but I mean, that car just both, both was, him and his teammate, Austin Dillon just, just didn't unload fast. And they both have been good here in the past. I, I don't know what happened, but yeah, n- neither one of them unloaded fast. Yeah. They looked like complete shit. Yeah. So I, I don't know what, but I mean, they could come out tomorrow and maybe they make some adjustments. Who knows? That's the bad thing. I'm just gonna go be straight up with it and say I ain't playing any I, Kyle Bush. I'm not either. <laughs> I'm not either. I hate to say it, but I feel like whenever I hate. whenever I take that stand, um, it, it it minus last week, it kind of kicks me in the ass sometimes. I don't know. Is that is that just me? No, I could completely see him him doing some kind of pit road strategy and getting up to the front and. Yeah, I, I could I could see him. Yeah, finishing in the top ten and and eat, you know making us eat our words and then get, and then getting a penalty and going to the back <laughs> that, at the end. That would be a Kyle Bush thing to do. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, he did that last week. So. Yeah, and then they did fire three of his pit crew members. I seen that. Yeah. So did they really? Maybe yeah. they yeah. did. Maybe yeah. these new guys will fuck up. <laughs> Could. Yeah. So, yeah, I think they came up from Xfinity. So. so let me ask you a dumb question here. Any of these guys that did run in Xfinity today, right? There's a couple, right? That's going tomorrow as well. Is there any reason, like, is there any issues with that? Is there anything that you learned from that? Or is it just a completely different thing? It's it's definitely completely different. Like, for example, the, the gearbox alone is completely different. There's It's a completely different pattern. 
So sometimes we'll see these guys fuck up in Xfinity, but as far as how the cars handle, it's completely different. These Xfinity cars are more loose in a sense, and these cup cars are going to be tied down and just... The cup cars drive more like a truck than they do Xfinity. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's... Yeah. Basically what you said. I got nothing to add. The only upside is they got more laps around the place, but completely different cars. So, I mean, laps matter, but it's going to be a completely different feeling. So Yeah. Back back in the day, you you used to see an advantage for that, but nowadays, it's you don't really see it. No. Anything else jumping out to you guys? That's I don't really have anything. We got no. you know we we need to get ownership. We need to get some sort of projections and some odds and things like that. Um, besides that, you want to jump into our we're calling you know if you've seen this show before, it's our crown their ass segment where we kind of as of now pick pick the guy we're gonna go heavy on. You guys want to jump into that? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. All right, we're crowning their ass on DraftKings now. If you want to crown them, then crown their ass. We got to go Hamlin, right? I mean, we're getting 80, 90, yeah. 100%. I mean, screw it, right? Lock the, lock the mofo in. Like I said, if he hits the wall or he gets jammed up, close the laptop. Is that is that kind of the strategy here? Or? That's Pretty it. Much, yeah. That's it. By the way, I like the break it down thing. I was a huge DX fan. Oh, so I, I love it. I, I know there's some people out there who are like, what the hell is that? <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, but... Yeah, De- Denny Hamlin's definitely the definitely the top dog here. I mean, it's yeah, I, I see him leading a bunch of laps and and just it, it it's gonna take a miracle, I think, for somebody to beat him. Unfortunately, yeah, like I said earlier, the pool sitter has been optimal in all four of the next gen races at Phoenix. And to kind of point out how obvious this is, in a sense, when we were all talking in the group chat earlier, Tyson, you asked us who are crown their ass player was going to be same time we replied Hamlin and we haven't talked about this at all yet so right I mean it's Hamlin Hamlin and a little more Hamlin yeah hey guess what he'll probably probably be in every lineup in mine but one like I said I'll I'll make one different just 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 to be different I guess what we got we we got an update here on Saberson let me pull this up here oh no way so let's look at some owner. Uh, no ownership yet. Ah, uh, no ownership yet. That'll come. Looks like we're get. Uh, you know, looks like Logano at twenty three getting getting a higher projection, the highest projection. If you're sorting now, look. Obviously, this this doesn't mean much. These median projections. Obviously, we want to look at some of these 99th percentile outcomes. These ninety fifth uh, from there. But, you know, I, I like to just look at this and judge it, kind of figure out kind of where these guys are going to come in. Danny Hamlin getting a little bit less of a projection. What jumps out to you when you see this kind of stuff? Kyle Busch getting to 42. He's only about seven points down from Logano. Like I said, not a huge deal here when it comes to these median projections, but something to talk about. Yeah, no, that definitely is. Um, I, that's surprising they got Logano, Logano that high. I mean, they must... They must think that Logano can make his way through the field. Like I said, Logano hasn't shown anything in, in race trim yet, but that, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe maybe with him qualifying bad, like Sterling said, maybe they do have it trimmed the other way a little bit. Yeah, and that would probably be a little group I make is Logano and Kyle Busch together and just set that at zero to one because there's I don't see any way possible that they both get there. But I, I do like having some exposure to Logano. Definitely prefer him over Kyle Bush. Yeah. yeah, that would be a good Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't fully see this here. I got to kind of mess with this. There you go. You can see the kind of range of outcomes here for Logano. Uh, you know, in that 60, 55, 60 point range for, you know, what, 13, 14% of the Sims. Some of these Sims are negative points, you know, getting. What like seven percent of the sims getting negative points, and very rarely is he is he hitting that ninety hundred point range, which you probably need from him. Um, when it comes to value, this is a first run. Obviously, this stuff is going to change once ownership updates. Things are going to change. Cindric here is as of now, based on his median projection, uh, one of the top value type guys. Logano's up yeah. there as well. Josh Berry, who's he's in the back, like the the back back, right? Yeah. So. 
Um, when it comes to value, I feel like you're probably, if we're going heavy on these expensive dudes, you're probably going to have to fit, find one, right? Like, yeah. what are you comfortable with when it comes to these dudes who could absolutely get nothing or negative points or just get 10 points or something? Uh, what are you comfortable with in this race? And kind of based on what we were doing today, like thoughts on, you know, one or one punt, is that fine? Are you doing two punts? You know, what are you comfortable with? Uh, I haven't played around with builds a lot yet, but looking at the optimals, the 2022 spring race did not have a punt. The fall race had one punt. The 2023 spring race had two punts and the 23 fall race had two punts. And I'm going to consider everybody below 6K a punt. So you can make a group of everyone below 6K kind of split that up, have it zero to one for a little bit and zero to two for the other half. Now, when you say like zero to one, that means zero or one in every lineup. Yeah. Yeah. Well, max of one. Okay. All right. Yeah. And when you're in your optimizer, like I love that Sterling puts, puts this out because immediately by making these groups, like we're all, we're automatically just, we're different. Like if you're just clicking, right. if you're just going into Saber Sim, like I love Saber Sim, they do a great job. But if you're just going in there, clicking optimize, and then and and going through and doing your contest sims, you're gonna need to find some other way to get different. Whether that's capping your salary, using GeoMean, doing that kind of thing, um, because I feel like you're just gonna get a bunch of the same stuff that everybody is getting. But when we're doing these groups that that Sterling's talking about, like I've had such good luck without even really having to limit anything else, as far as being unique just um just getting these uh, unique ass lineups by building groups spe specifically based off of certain guys or certain positions um that's a huge deal dude like i don't think people understand that yeah yeah that's for sure all right you yeah want... it's go ahead bro sorry we'll, we'll get this all down right. we got three people i'm used to only two people go ahead <laughs> it took me a little while to uh, get used to the thing of groups like i for the first half a year I did that, I didn't run any groups, and I couldn't figure out what the fuck was going on. And once you start dialing those in is when it really all comes together. But uh, I want to hit on that salary thing real quick. Three of the four races here, the optimal did not leave more than 500 Now, the very first race here, the total salary was 48600 so it left 1400 on the table. But I think you can get away with using pretty much all your salary. Set that at like 49.5, maybe 49.2, just to get a little different there. But for the Got most it. part, I'm using pretty much all the salary. You want to max it out. I know I in your podcast, you guys were talking about potentially based off of where things were, you know, you could leave a little bit more on the table. Uh, how do you usually handle that? Like, how are you determining that? when you come into a race, like what jumps out to you as, okay, I should maybe maxing it out or, Oh, I should leave some on the table. Yeah. I, I honestly, me personally, um, I know Sterling's a little bit better than I am, but like, I look at this kind of like a showdown with NFL. It's like when you make a showdown lineup, you're going to have the same line. You're more than likely going to have the same lineup as somebody. So I try to differentiate, differentiate. I can't say that word uh, a little bit. And maybe I'll leave a little salary on the table here and there just to try to just try to be different because if that if that does hit then that's a chance of less you know uh people splitting it with yeah so yeah there's a lot of different levers you can pull to get different uh in yeah. this case you th it's probably best that maybe you keep it above what 49.5 or at least if you're if you're using optimizer cap it at you know min 48 or 49 you don't want to be leaving three or four grand on the table yeah, I definitely would not leave more than fifteen hundred. So men's salary set at forty eight five, and, and but, that's all historical. That's all based off of optimals from from this race historically, right? Is that where you're getting that info from? Yeah, got it. Hey, you guys want to build a lineup? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right. So I, I want to dive into your guys's head when you're hand building. Now, I'm not good enough to hand build myself. Um, sometimes I will based off of what you said in the discord and your write up just to get like a nice lineup that I'm really super comfortable with. Usually I'm setting my rules. Usually I'm crunching using, using, um, contest Sims to try to get there. 
when it comes to hand building, because I know, I know, uh, I don't know about you, Ryan, but I know Sterling likes to hand build a handful and then do, you know, do, use use an optimizer as well. What are you like? What's going on in your head, and what like check boxes are you using when you're building by hand? Unfortunately, I, I build all all of them by hand. I I haven't even messed around with the optimizer yet. I, I I need to upgrade to that, but I I just haven't. Hey, hand builders unite, man! I'm telling you, like there there's a huge up there's a huge there's uh, on certain cases, like guys who are hand building, like are are coming out on top in a lot of cases. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, there is an advantage or whatever, but yeah, I mean, I just uh, you know I. I like I said, I only built about 10 different lineups or whatever, but I, you know, start like kind of, what do I want to do? Do I want to do 90% Hamlin? Obviously, because I said, I'm probably going to do nine out of 10 Hamlin. So I'll sit there and write on a notebook. I, I, I like I said, I'm, I guess old school. I'd sit there, write on a notebook. Okay. Denny Hamlin, nine out of 10. And then I'll, you know, Joey Logano, I'll put in four lineups. And then like, I just sit there and just try to hand build and, and make a, Make it all make sense, I guess. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'll, that's... yeah, I'll just make a list of drivers that I want to use and how many lineups I want to put them in and then just try to try to work it in. But, Which now that DraftKings has that exposure. Yeah, exactly. That, that makes it a lot easier. Definitely helps. I, I, I love that because, yeah, at the end, then I'll hit exposure and make sure that, you know, I'm all good. We need to get an in. Once, the, once it's live, we need to get an exposure tab too. Like, yeah. come on, yeah. y'all. that's always the problem i always got to run to my laptop and be like how much of this this guy just crashed he's 30 percent owned how much do i have and i gotta open up saber sim and look through it it'd be nice to just look on on the app but you know that's a little tangent there yeah yeah no i agree all right so sterling what what are you thinking man let's uh walk us through this Uh, we're just we're just we're blasting hamlin here right let's just lock let's just pop him in we know we're we know we're building with him where are you going yep. now? I uh, I like the idea of playing the front row. So Hamlin and Gibbs. I don't think many people are going to want to do that. We've we've seen the front row be optimal once out of the four races here, but with that 8K price tag on Ty Gibbs, I love the idea of pairing them both, especially with both of them having that open pit stall. And yeah, exactly. And Gibbs is a little cheaper, so you know where where are you going now? I, we're we're not going to build the full lineup. We're going to build we'll, we'll build uh, five five guys. Um, okay. And, and obviously, uh, like I said, jump in that Discord. Uh, things are things are continuing continuing to change. And and you know, obviously, if if you're new into NASCAR, you could build early, but you you got to be around because guys go to yeah. the back, things happen. You got to adjust to news. I feel like every time I'm comfortable with a build and my portfolio lineups, somebody gets moved to the back for some stupid shit. And then I'm yep. like, oh, I was like 70% on that guy. Do I, did he, was he starting far back enough that it doesn't matter? Uh, you know, you know what I mean? Because if they're moved to the back, well, they're, they're racking up points from where they qualified at. So they got to right. get yeah. back to that point and then do better than that as well. So, you know, just, yeah. just, just, things to think about uh when you're building here do you probably was it 3 30 p.m eastern lock you probably want to be around your computer a half hour beforehand just to make sure everything's kind of in line you know yeah you're you're exactly right because i mean there has been times where you know even uh even denny hamlin might have to start to the back you know and if that happens Zero. i'm changing up I'm I'm hands off to any hand with zero percent ownership, you know. So it's definitely and that's happened before with pole setter. The front yeah. row's been having to move to the back. So uh Chase Elliott, I remember that championship race at Phoenix. He was I think he was the pole setter and he had to he had to move to the back. Now he did end yeah. up making his way to the front. Yeah, but, I remember that. But I mean that's a different conversation. But um I'm pretty sure yeah. d- didn't Truex have that situation a few races ago where where we got news, he got moved to the back. We faded him, and then his ass was up front the whole race, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And Logano with the glove. Oh, yeah. Logano, yeah, 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 yeah. It, yep. Yeah, that, so, was, that was damn close in that one. Yeah. So I mean, it's just like football. Um, I unfortunately I work night shift, so I work seven p.m. to seven a.m. So even for football, I have to set my alarm clock to make sure I wake up and get all the, you know, make sure so and so didn't twist his ankle in practice or yep. you know warm ups. You know, just like just same thing with NASCAR. You don't want to. 
you don't want to not wake up and then see that uh yeah. you know somebody got to the back so and we'll be posting so have- all that stuff in in the discord for you guys exactly yep all right but, so uh, hamlin and gibbs seen, uh ownership is up i yeah. think we are we're seeing kyle borsch as the highest owned so i'm what def- yeah definitely gonna be under on that highest owned huh why, why do you think that I'm, is? Because he's starting. Uh, he's starting so far back. Yeah, that's every people love playing these PD plays. I mean, they feel like it's guaranteed, but in a sense, it is. Like I think he's a great cash games play, but in that big GPP, the fifteen, I ain't gonna have any of them. All right, we'll leave him out of this. What what other ownership are you seeing? Who's the who's? I mean, you're you're telling me that Hamlin's not the highest on guy according to the uh, projections right now. He's the second at thirty eight percent. That's a yeah. That's pretty low. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely going to be way over on that. Yeah, I expect him to come in a little higher than that actually. But I'm, I, I'm sticking with it. I'm going a hundred percent and all one fifty. And then I'll probably make like a hedge build for the mini max and stuff and fade them. Right, but, right. And, and, yeah. and I'm glad you brought that up because I, uh, uh, on a lot of occasions, I'll max out all the twenty maxes. I'll do like four bullets in the big contest just because we all, you know, we all, you know, dream of getting a hundred K. Um, but I usually do like 80 to 120 maxes and that's its own portfolio. And then in the mid, I'll do the mini max and that's its own portfolio. So somebody I'm like massively overweight on in the 20 maxes, I might go, you know what? I'm just going to be a little bit safer and I'll get to, you know, around the field or a little bit more. Is that, is that something you guys do too? Um, you know, just as a general DFS strategy, I don't care what sport it is. You know, that, that, that could be a good idea depending on, you know, what contest you're playing. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, I keep trying to uh, put it in football perspective because I see you guys, you know, are a lot of football and other sports. But yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, you know, if you're high on a guy in one contest, I'm going to, you know maybe sprinkle in a couple other guys, you know, I mean, there's always that backup running back that everybody, you know, that's priced at six K that everybody throws in their lineups and yep. I'm probably going to throw him in there too. But then I'm going to have a couple contests just in case he does, you know, have a two point performance. So same, same thing with NASCAR. Yeah. Like you said, I think it's a general, general DFS strategy for sure. Absolutely. All right. Sorry. We keep going off on tangents. Let's, uh, let, let's get on to this one here. <laughs> do that's easy to do where is <laughs> larson's ownership just out of curiosity seeing him as it looks like he's actually kind of low yeah he's around 20 percent. oh man starting seven, <laughs> 17th yeah yeah so all right so we got hamlin and gibbs so far um and what's that leave us that leaves us 31 and average at 78 we want to go Redick there at 85. What's he starting? Yeah, I Six. wouldn't mind that. that. That would be that would be probably where I would go. Okay. Uh, probably need to find some value here, I'm guessing, or a mid-range guy. I like the idea of playing Bubba. That's right around that average salary remaining. Yep. There you go. Hamlin, Gibbs, Redick, Bubba. Yep. And then, uh, what are we thinking for the next one? I mean, we got Cindric down at 62, which I think is a great. That, what do you think about that there? That kind of what's that li- lined up perfect with that if you throw Chastain in chat, Chastain, and uh, yeah, Chastain and Cindric, Chastain and Cindric. Where's Chastain? Yeah. What, what's he priced at? Oh, yeah, Nine K. You got, you got 100 bucks left. Hamlin, Gibbs, Reddick, Wallace, Sindrick, Chastain. Just as a er, you know, an early build off the top of our heads, how are you guys feeling about that? I, I, like, I like it. it. Yeah, I, I do too. I'll probably have a couple lineups of that, actually. It feels like Sindrick is kind of a guy that's going to be pretty high-owned. He's going to pop in the optimizers. What's his ownership coming in at? Seeing him just below 30%. Got it. Pretty high upside starting that far back, right? I know you don't yeah. want to get to a ton of these guys because it's hard to pass here, but at 62, what did we say he needed to finish? Uh, what was that? What that sheet say? I did. Uh, 
Let me see here. Let me see if I can pull that up. Uh, let's see. Has to finish 19th, which is definitely doable because he had a fast car in practice. Yeah, so. he was. So, was definitely fast in practice. I, I think I think he might be my second like highest owned guy. I don't I don't know if you agree with that, Sterling. He might next to Denny Hamlin. He might be my next. I'll have some. I I'm not gonna have a whole lot of them, and that's strictly an ownership thing for me. I plan on it. I'm going for that hundred k solo. So I know Hamlin's gonna be chalky. So I ain't gonna have any bush. I'm gonna look at these other ownerships and just. My main focus is going to be getting different because I'm going to have a pretty tight, pretty tight core. Yeah. Now, when it when it comes to getting different, like, are you grabbing ten percent on guys? Are you grabbing, you know, what is your kind of threshold to what is different? That's that's my main thing is looking at those guys that are like ten percent, seeing who can actually do something. Like, we got, oh wow, Carson Hosovar. Yeah, two percent owned. And he probably will be pretty low owned starting that far up. Yeah. That's I'm I'm gonna have a hefty amount of Carson Hayes far. Then you got Nergrax and he's I wouldn't play those guys together, but I like it. Ty Gibbs, he's coming in as low owned too. That's yeah. I'm gonna have a lot of Hamlin Ty Gibbs, so I'm automatically gonna be different. Yeah. There you go. All right, so let's wrap this up, guys. So obviously, uh, w w what are some other hot takes you guys have? Any Anything now that we see some ownership, any guys that you're just like, man, I will not click on that guy's name. You know, obviously we know about Hamlin. We're going to be heavy on him. Keep an eye on things. You never know what can happen before the race. But uh, any, anything jump out that you're like, I'm not touching that dude. Yeah, probably Kyle Busch. Is, yep. that, is that what you're going to say? No, Kyle Busch, all Hamlin. Yep. Hamlin leads the whole fucking race. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so now we could say your fade pretty comfortably is going to be Bush. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Good to know. Make sure you guys are in that Discord. Like I said, hit subscribe on this. We have uh, UFL coming up, the Spring Football League, USFL, XFL merged. The first game is on the 30th, um, the first slate. That's going to be fun. We're going to have plenty of content for that. Obviously, make sure you guys are following Sterling and Ryan on Twitter or X or whatever the hell you want to call it now and jump in the Discord. Uh, make sure also to follow them on, Is it? are you guys just on Spotify, your your podcast? Uh, Apple, yeah, Apple Pod, Spotify. Yeah, we're basically on all of them. I think that Stitcher or whatever and Amazon, yep. all of them. It's a good listen. And you guys record on Friday nights, so you guys kind of just... You guys wrap up a little bit of what happened last week, things to look forward to. I loved it because I can get my head around some guys who might be, I got to be paying attention to as qualifying happens and kind of as everything falls into in, into place. Make sure you guys are yeah. following them. It's a, it, it's, a, it's a great listen. And look, we all got microphones. We, we, we got lights on our face. Uh, at minimum, it's not going to be a, a terrible listen. <laughs> right, right. All right, we appreciate you guys. Uh, we will see you next time. Maybe we'll do another show. Comment down below if you guys want to see another show from us. See you guys later. All right, see ya. See ya.